Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Innkeeper, and today I'd like to welcome you back to Battle Brothers, making our way through the lands of light right here, even though it is dark time, so there is no light in sight, other than the cushy-looking homes of the humans that live in these lovely little towns right here. An absolutely beautiful sight to behold. Last session, we had a little bit of trouble dealing with Hoggart. The fight didn't go necessarily as well as it could have done, however, no one died, which I suppose is better than someone dying. We did, however, take a decent amount of damage, and there were a few of 70% uh, chances that we did unfortunately miss. miss. Quite a few of them, in fact, there. Yeah, that sentence had a few weird sort of S's and ists, and lots of random things thrown in there. It was quite interesting, but anyway. Icarus has had a ripped ear, which will fortunately heal itself. In the next three days, however, I would imagine he's just going to constantly have a ripped ear right now. If we just throw this in here. Look, his ear is fine. It's probably the other ear. It's gone. It's completely gone. But it doesn't matter because he's sort of got a, the, the world's weirdest haircut. So even if both of your ears were just sort of... If they were falling off, maybe protrude, protruding some sort of fungus. Perhaps maybe there was some weird itchy sort of stuff coming out of your nose. People wouldn't take notice because your hairstyle, absolutely crazy. <laughs> Anyway, we also have a little bit of damage done to our armors right here, as you can see. Unfortunately, we lack the tools in order to fully supply them. So before we leave Jadaberg right here to take the rather long walk all the way up through the bronze flats to uh, get Gisberg, Gitsberg right there, we first need to check our provisions. Now, I think the shop's closed right now, unfortunately, so we're going to have to camp out. Isn't really the best idea in the world. And you know what? Because it's so... Uh, early into the night. We may as well make our way over to Gitsburg right here and just hope that we don't run into any combatants that may make our day a little bit unpleasant. While we do this, through the bronze, bronze flats, bronze flats, I don't know what's wrong with me. I seem to be slurring a lot today. That was a very quick night. That was, that was really quick. I feel like the day-night cycle has sped up a little bit. But anyway, also, ooh, supply caravan right there. This place seems to have an iron vein. Fantastic. Perhaps they will have a particular shop. They have a weaponsmiths, which is fantastic. Also a harbor, which is interesting. These are very late game weapons. However, the throwing axes might be of certain use later on in the game. We're also going to sell this. There's no bucklers, unfortunately, but we can have a quick gander. It looks like there is also a contract which is locked. Only contracts by the noble house owning this fortification are available here, but they don't recognize you as worthy of their attention. Increase your renown and fulfill the ambition of noble houses to take notice of the company in order to unlock new contracts. That is not something I've had to do before. That must be a new thing. This castle needs updating. It's, it seems a bit unfinished. It looks like concept art for a castle, but they've missed a few finite details. Quite interesting. They also have a harbor right here. Let's have a quick look at our marketplace. To see if we can find... Oh, a dock. Whoa, a falcon? A trained falcon can be released into battle to discover hidden prey. That's not something I've seen before either. That's really cool. There's also a bunch of different types of armors in here, including the nasal helmet, which is quite fantastic, mostly because it looks nice. However, you, could, you tend to find quite a few of those lying around when you go up against human foes. So, probably something that we want to do later on. We do aim to go up against more humans in the early game to try and get ourselves better types of armor because, of course, they do drop items that are usable by us because we are, of course, humans. Something else to mention as well. I've read your comments. People have, been re people have requested to be named. Thank you very much for that, by the way. I wonder if we've missed anyone here. Gunfer? You seem like someone that I need to name. So, we will go ahead and name you. So, Zar requested me name, so we're just going to put you as Zar. Right there, there we go. We got Zar. I like it. No, four Zar fours. Uh, I believe Australian viewer. Thank you very much for the request, by the way. Also, Marius has said, dude, the archer is amazing. Iron lungs and dexter dexterous are great traits. Make sure to keep him safe. So, it's like iron lungs and dexterous. I'm imagining... There we go. Iron lungs, so plus five fatigue recovery per turn, which is actually really good. And Dexterous, which is plus five melee skill. Icarus right there, making sure to keep him alive, because that is pretty fantastic. But of course, he is slightly proficient in his range skills. We also want to point out that Zara as well, three stars right there on the range skill. I forgot to look up what these stars really meant. Uh, yeah, I should really 
have a look at that. To my understanding, actually, to be honest with you, I don't know what they mean. I remember researching it at one point, and when I was playing it, I think I did understand what they meant. But at the moment, still something I need to research. I've also looked for all these trees. Most of them are the same. The biggest difference in the skill tree is the section in the middle right here, which is weapon, weapon masteries. The biggest one... Or the, the weapon with the, the perk weapon with the most impact, I would say, is the Maced Mastery right here. Which is, Knockout has a 100% chance to stun the target, if not immune. That is insane. If that works the way I think it does, if I'm not missing out anything, then that is an absolutely absurd skill that must be taken advantage of post-haste. So that's something we're definitely going to look into. But, oh yeah, you know what? Something else I forgot. We need to make sure we have a better shield for Blunter right here. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's purchase you this shield. Fantastic. And we will just give you that. Don't want to spend too much of our money because, of course, we'll run into trouble. We are going to keep the bucklers in case we need a backup. Tools. So tools are worth 234. We have 11 days of goods. It, now, from what I've seen... Of what I recall, tools are generally cheaper in cities. So we probably want to make our way... We probably want to purchase some tools and then make our way over to one of these towns over here. These ones are quite far apart, though. This one over here is not amazing because it does seem to have some sort of a dead end. And there are lots of mountains around here. So if we're doing any sort of searching quests, we may run into a little bit of bother. Around here send, tends to have sort of quite a sparse population at the same time. So any of the structures or any of the towns in this particular zone here might be a good start for us just because I, I imagine they are generally low leveled other than of course this capital city that you can see right here, Dunsfast, which is very much high up there as you can see. It's, it's got a very pretty design. However, Haven right here, got a tavern harbor and a harbor. It's got two harbors? No, barber, right? <laughs> Misread there. Of course, now we know what this place has, which is a temple. The temple, I think, is still... A refuge from the harsh world outside. You can seek healing here. Oh, wow. They've actually got this added. Okay. So we can pay to get the pierced chest removed, which is minus 20% max fatigue, but it will heal in two to four days. I don't know if this requires, uh, requires medical supplies. I imagine it does. Any seven medical supplies. Wow, three, to, three and seven medical supplies. Interesting, okay then. Provisions when it comes to food. We got five days. I feel like that's an okay amount. We don't want to linger around here too much. Of course, we could purchase ourselves an extra person. But I feel like we don't necessarily have the money for that now. And I really should find some sort of contract to take and try and increase our skill set. Our abilities. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, you know what? Before I do that, we also want to just go ahead and buy these tools. They're expensive. I would rather buy a smaller number of them. But you know what? 20 is just what we're going to have to be left with, I'm afraid. And at the moment, as you can see, we have eight more days until we run out of money. Because, of course, we do need to pay our mercenaries. Otherwise, you know, what the hell are they fighting for? Oh, wow. During camp. As the company takes a break, you decide to address the men. Brothers... I want everyone to know that Light Crusaders are not just cutthroats and errand boys, but skilled fighters of the First Order. Word of our deeds must spread so the merchants and noblemen are begging us to make their contracts. To take their contracts. What do you tell the men that the company will set out to do? We shall get the company's strength back to a dozen men and will make, a, will make us a, formid a formidable force and will allow us to take on more profitable work. Or... We need allies. Forging a bond of friendship and trust with one of the towns will get the company better prices, more volunteers, and more steady work. Hmm. I'd rather take on more profitable work. I feel like as the Light's Crusaders, we will not back off from any sort of foe. So getting our company up to a decent strength, where we have a good number of men, and at the same time, taking on more profitable work so that we can sustain that larger force is much better than just sort of lingering on the on the back lines, you know. So let's go ahead and do that. That's what we're going to tell them. Have a roster of at least 12 men, and we need to accomplish that uh, just some just whenever. So hire enough men to have a full roster of at least 12 men. Visit settlements across the lands to find recruits and suits you need. Having a full roster will allow you to take on more dangerous and better paying contracts. So there we are, fantastic. Now we're going through the lowlands right here into the marshy zones. 
some peat pits around here. Fantastic. They grow peat. They grow peats here. Oh, and we have a contract. A one skull. The more skulls there are, the more difficult the contract. And as you can see, because of its grey bannerless flag, you can see that it's not really owned by any lords or anyone that are part of the clans of the land. So this is just a random contract given out to, I believe, this... Oh, no, okay, yeah, it's, it's not a lord's contract. It's just some random person. So let's see what they've got to offer us. Negotiations. You look out, Sigurd. Sigurd. The treasurer's widow. And watch men load... Window. <laughs> I need to read. I need to read good, obviously. And watch men load a few wagons with goods. Sigurd the treasurer joins you. Two goblets of wine in hand. You take one and drink it all in one swig. The man stares at you. That wasn't treat cheap. You're supposed to enjoy it, you shrug. God, my guy is such a bastard. Sorry, I can't have another one. Get Sorry, I can have another one. Get it right. Cigar the treasurer turns around and goes into to his desk. So, I need a caravan guarded. Oh, a caravan guarded. Simply right. There's a plenty of crowns in it. Sure, we can guard a caravan. I don't see the problem with that. Not to mention we're going to have a defensive bonus because we will have caravan guards with us at the same time. So, what does it pay? 60 crowns in advance. Another 240 when the job is done. Hmm... We need to be paid more for this. I can't remember what the place was that he requested. I should really have looked it up first. But if it's 60 crowns in advance and another 240 when the job is done, then I can't imagine it'll be too far away. And I have to imagine it's going to, well, we're going to end up in another place, which if we're lucky enough, will give us another contract. I would prefer to be paid a little bit more for this, though. So I will ask. 60 crowns and in advance. Okay, so... Hmm. Okay, then. I guess we'll just accept the offer, then. Okay, Helfenstein. In the northwest. I will accept the contract. Okay, then. No worries. Before we go off, we might want to have a quick look at the marketplace. There's lots of peat right here. Of course, we could buy some of this peat and sell it in areas that have a much higher yield or a much higher price. What the hell is this? Antidote. An antidote for various types of poisons. Tastes quite bitter. That's interesting. Don't know if I would really buy that, to be honest. We've got a bandage right here. Clean bandages that can be used in combat to apply pressure to bleeding wounds and stop any hemorrhaging. That's really good. Wow. Okay. I didn't realize any of these other provisions were accessible. They are quite useful. See, as you can see right here, these tools cost a hell of a lot more in the outskirts. Of course, we could get ourselves some of these cleavers right here, but I am okay. So, I think we're good to go. So, we're going to be with the caravan of eight. I don't know if we're added to that eight. A few caravan carts, some caravan hands. Okay, then. I don't know what, you know, the caravan hands are going to help us for. But oh well. Mm. And this is quite the bend right here. This is really the, the type of terrain that makes it quite difficult to get around. As you can see, this is actually quite far away. And we are losing money, I believe. Are we? I don't know if we get charged for these days. I believe we do. But this is a sort of a really good, really easy early game contract. Because, of course, we do get the help of the caravan guard. Oh, an engagement. Oh, no. Damn. I thought we were going to really get into the thick of something then. Quite a few battles that have taken place here. Ooh. What was that? Golden Order? Along the road. You spot a strange man hobbling along the road. He's dressed in a long cloak. And he's got a knapsack yoked over one of his shoulders. His eyes stare at the ground until they come to your feet. At which point he finally looks up. Seeing your company, the man is surprisingly unalarmed. In fact, he's quite receptive to your presence. And asks if maybe he could spend the night with cell swords. Before continuing his journey into uh, to Dunsfast. That's quite far away. Yeah, join us by the campfire. Ah, the battle of many names. Oh, yeah, I took a part. Vanguard from the center. No, I don't want... Okay, then. May you find peace in the roads, traveler. Just a random guy. I don't know if something bad's going to happen. But we seem to be okay. And, of course, we did get charged, which is quite unfortunate for spending nearly two whole days getting here. So there we are. And this place is now well supplied. That's not something... Interesting, so this place has been recently supplied with fresh wares and many of those can now be bought for the right price. 
That's quite interesting. And the mechanic I was also not aware of. A hooked blade. Hmm. An agricultural tool adapted for use in battles. These pole arms are a hooked blade for striking over some distance and pulling in targets. A very expensive weapon. Not something that we can afford, unfortunately. Do we have any more helmets? Do we require any more helmets? Yeah. Nelrio could do with just a hood. We will purchase one. We have slightly more money now, so I feel okay doing that. Do we have any contracts at our disposal? We do, however, is two skulls. If I recall correctly, contracts get... Well, I believe in the past, contracts would be updated whenever a caravan was to go into the town or something to that degree. So two skulls, slightly worrying. Let's see. Uh, well, there's no home lands. All right, let's see. The stranger squints it, then quickly continues. So, yeah, if you have some money, the fellas. I'm not seeing him specify any particular type of creature that we have to kill. Let's see. Dean Candles barely light the room enough for you to see. It's Walter, the councilman, sitting behind the desk where the shadow dance on the walls by the, true, by the tune of flickering lights. Would you lend your swords to me if I paid you good coin? I need a small chest delivered safely to Walter the Guildmaster in Jadenburg, southeast of here. Men have killed each other over this, so it must be ready to. So you, you must be ready to defend it with your life. He takes a pause, measuring your response. Hmm. Okay then. Let's talk money. 530 crowns. So these kind of quests usually have a scripted instance where someone will try and take the supplies from you. 530 crowns is a lot of money. And that worries the hell out of me. That really does. That's not the kind of money where... I feel like I would be able to take on anyone. And because this is two skulls and we are playing on challenging, I don't think this is the kind of quest for us. So I don't think I'm going to accept that. What kind of armors do we have right here? Whoa! Glorious knightly... Oh, wow. Okay, I don't even know what that is. Bisnet. Bisnet business. <laughs> anyway. 333 armor. Heavily, oh, what the hell? I don't know half of these. The pronunciation for me in this game is just, it's not great. Right, so we do have some other towns on the outskirts, including what looks like a militia barracks. And this town looks quite promising, although I think I'd rather go to this one first and then just sort of cut my way around. I could go through this forest, but I think I will just take the road. So we have a good amount of money. Food right now is not an amazing problem, so I'm not too worried. We're going to speed the game up a little bit here. Looks like the game has determined that this is the fastest route. You never know. We might be able to find some wolves while we're making our way over here. Just another caravan. I want to stick with that caravan. But we're close enough where I feel quite safe. All right, here we go. Ooh, what the hell is this? Raided. This place has been recently raided. It suffered damage and lost valuable goods and supplies. And lives were lost. And also terrified villagers. The villagers here are terrified of unknown horrors. Fewer potential recruits are to be found on the streets. And people deal less favorably with strangers. So there's only two people. Wow. These two people are the ones that really want to get into it. We've got a lumberjack. And we also have a poacher. Okay, fantastic. And the goods right here that you can see. Ooh, hunter's hat. That looks pretty cool, but we don't have any rangers, so why would we buy that? Of course, only rangers. And then a Fletcher, which they do sell different types of bows right here. Hunting bow. Okay, then the Fletcher's not someone I've seen before. Heavy crossbow. That's a hell of a lot of damage. Hmm, so you can get crossbow. Well, I was always aware you could get small crossbows. But the heavy crossbow is something I'm quite interested in. Very expensive, though. And the hunting bows seem to do a good amount of damage. However, their effectiveness is quite low. But anyway, let's see what this contract's all about. Maybe it's just another delivery. That'd be quite cool. So let's, let's talk. So he wants us to go to a cemetery. The folks are in turmoil. Graves in the cemetery have been found open and raided. Some simpleton claims it's to be the dead rising from the graves. 
None of this. The land of light will not be scoured by darkness. We will accept this contract. If, of course, uh, you know, any undead were to be, you know, actually a part of this. Hopefully they're ghouls, because ghouls are quite easy to deal with. Well, depending, because I think they did have an update, which I don't think I've also dealt with yet. So maybe they're easy, I don't know. Mm. 90 crowns in advance with 350 when the job is done. That sounds like a good deal to me, to be honest. Let's take it. And the contract is all the way over there. Slightly terrifying. Ooh, okay. Grudge bringers? They're the bringers of the grudge. Fantastic. They bring grunge. <laughs> Good. Oh, we could probably make our way over there at some point as well. This is... What is it? Mist Barrows. So are we, on the, are we in the Mist Barrows right now or the King's Mill? No! Okay, tombstones fall over a ground of... Okay, then over them, they appear to have been having something of a feast. A few of them still gnawing at the arm, the leg. Presumably the limbs of your supposed grave robbers. Okay, so there were grave robbers. However, it seems like they've been vanquished by the undead. Or whatever the hell these things are. There's only six of them, which is pretty good for me. Now, they tend to be quite aggressive. And I don't know if they've been updated at all. So they might have an, some extra skills that I'm not aware of. However... We're going to try and play it safe. We're just going to shield wall this. Blunter's in an unfavorable position right there. As he's sort of going to deal with a good number of them. So I think for now, we are going to shield wall you, Icarus. We are going to bring Zard down and shield wall him. We're going to bring Dan down, shield wall you. We do get a bonus based on the amount of shield walls that are near us. Shield wall Blunter. And then we're going to bring me down. Do I do the spear or is this just a shield wall? I think I'm going to shield. I don't know if they... Sh I mean, he he'll be able to move two spots and then hit me. The others won't really be able to do that. So maybe shield walling here is a little bit preemptive. But I think it's fine. So now we're going to end our turns. Of course, shield walling is a very high fatigue skill. Oh, he's, he's far back. Okay, then. They are quite far back. Oh, okay, here we go. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Very terrifying. Blunter is now fleeing slightly. Or fleeting. Okay, then. So we're in a bit of an odd position right now. I could bring Zar up and take a swing at one of these lot right here. They have taken their turns, which means I don't necessarily need to do that. I can see what happens to Nelria first. So I think instead I am going to skip his turn before I do that. Yeah, wait turn. Nelria... Has a 59% chance to kill this mother trucker. I'm going to call him a ghoul because I don't know how to say that thing. I'm going to go and ooh, impale surrounded. The surround bonus isn't huge because there's just two of them. We're going to go for it. Ooh, the miss right there, really bad. We're going to go for the spear wall right here. Because as you can see, there are two spots that these ghouls could come at us from. Of course, they could climb over to try and get Blunter, which isn't the ideal situation to be in. We're going to move Usk down to try and take a shot. 65%. I wonder why your chance... You probably just have a higher melee skill. That's probably it. Let's go for it. Another miss. Oh, it's going to be another one of those sort of missy... We're going to miss a lot, I feel, during these fights. Right, let's skip your turn. Blunter, we could have not... We could knock you back into the spear wall. That would be quite interesting, but it would just knock him back. Or we go for the 47% chance to hit. And then probably just shield wall after that. Let's do that. A miss. Shield wall. Bleeding, unfortunately. We are going to go for the double hit. A miss. A hit. Okay. We're missing quite a lot, which is a bit terrifying. Ooh, okay. Ooh, we're missing a bit too much, I feel. And I think to give Blunter a bonus, we should probably shield wall here. And I think we will try and shiv you. A little bit of damage, not too bad. Probably going to move Icarus. And then shield wall. Of course, it does give this ghoul the double tap advantage. So maybe not the best idea in the world. And Blunter died. Instantly. So we've lost a brother already. Very unlucky. But we have missed a few chances to hit right there that were extremely against us. Okay then, so we're fleeting a little bit, not looking too good. We need to get a kill right here in order to bring our morale back up. This one seems to be a good one to kill because its morale is quite high. Um, 
Now you're sort of in the open right there. These two are the wounded ones. So sort of trying to go for them would be the best idea. And Neria doesn't have a shield, so he does have that sort of smaller defensive bonus right there. I feel like going for this one. It's 41%, 53%. Okay, we're going to go for the 53%. A hit. <sighs> Miss, not great. Uh, you're going to have to go for the hit and then the shield wall. Definitely go for him, or we could... No. Nice! And then shield. Okay, then. Nelria, you should try and get this kill, really. Of course, this one is surrounded, but I really feel like this one's sort of going to, to stop us from fleeing so much. So 47%, can we do it? Nice. Didn't kill it, though, unfortunately. Really bad that we didn't get that kill. 45%. We could just go for the double tap. You do have a lot of health and armor. Miss. Ah, double miss. Really bad there. Really, really bad. Okay, and the 61% chance or the 70% chance. Oh, I feel like I'm going to miss with this. Which is going to cause a lot of damage and possibly some fleeing. Of course, I still have my turn to come up, so I could move up one and then take a jab. I think that's probably what I'll end up doing. So let's go for the 70% chance to do some damage. Ooh, we are we are very unlucky. Right, 76%. Ooh, okay. <laughs> we are... <laughs> we are getting ex insanely unlucky this game, apparently. I don't feel like I've ever missed this much in my other playthroughs. I don't know if playing on challenging is giving them a higher dodge chance or something, but... I've, I've read up on challenging and it doesn't really change their stats at all. It just makes loot and armor harder to come across. Which is the best way to do difficulty, I feel. Right, so a 57% chance. It's sort of the same situation to be in. I might have, we got really lucky that round. I'm quite happy with the results there. 57% is the best chance that we have against these three units. So let's go for it. A nice hit. Looks like we did some damage to its hand right there. Should we really look up what some of those mean? Ooh! Icarus died! I didn't even realize he was fleeing. Really bad right there. Maybe going for that kill would have taken him out of fleeting. I don't know. Fleeing? He was fleeing there. All right. Double double axe again. Two misses. Really bad. 70%. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, boy. Right. Not good. Not good at all. Jab. Okay. Jab. Let's see what happens. A hit on Zar. I'm fleeing a bit now. A miss. A hit. Miss. Nice. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad at all. But now we have to do... <laughs> it's, it's the, the beginning of the game is always an odd back and forth of missing. Unfortunately, we have lost two people, which is absolutely huge, huge and has made this mission not worth it at all. However, maybe we get a good reward out of killing these little ghouls. Oh, these misses. They're not good at all. They're terrible. 51%. They're in our favor as well. All right. We're going to have to go for the 51. I'm probably going to have to shield wall next turn. Another miss. Another miss. Ah, oh, 70%. A miss. Oh, wow. This is absolutely atrocious. <laughs> another miss. Another miss. Oh, my morale's going down now. Right, let's go for the two jabs. 63%. Oh, no. We won't be able to shield wall. And I feel like shield warning here is very important. Okay. We're going to have to shield wall this one. That extra melee defense is huge. Right, let's go for another turn. Unfortunately, getting a hit right there, but another miss hitting the shield. Ah, Zar's been killed. Ah, oh, no. An absolute clusterfuck of emotions. <laughs> That's, it's just we keep missing. It's awful. There we go. We got a kill. Fantastic. We're going to move Usk down. See if we can get the last hit on this one. Nearly killed him. Do you want to move down into the middle here? I think we want to move in there. 53. We got the kill. We can also move up to get this one. Which I feel like is worthwhile. Me, however, I'm in a dire situation. We're going to go with the jab. But unfortunately, we won't be able to do much of it after that. Me, I'm just going to have to hope I don't die. Another miss. Two blocks right there. Another block. Another block! 
Insane. Okay, then. So, Usk should be able to get the hit on this one. Not the kill, but the hit. However, I don't know if this one's going to have a better chance. Probably not, although it does have some injuries. Quite a few, in fact, which may, which may lower its chances to dodge. My character, however, does have low fatigue, which means he's probably only going to be able to get one shot in. We have to remember, we do have Usk. Or not Usk, um... Is it Usk that's the other polearm guy? I think it is. Once again, I really wish it would just tell me the name of the person when I hovered over them. Just It would be easier to convey myself that way. So this has been an absolutely abysmal round so far. I think we're going to move up. No, if we move up there, it means that you'll have to go around twice and you won't be able to get hit off. Okay, yeah. We're going to have to just take the hit here. 46%. Can we do it? Hit. Fantastic work there, buddy. Fantastic. Right, 57%. I think we're going to wait here. Because I want to see how our frontline guys are really going to do. Right, 46%. We can probably go for two hits here. A miss. A hit. Unfortunately, not getting the kill. 58% versus 60%. This person is wavering, which means if I kill this one, he's probably going to try and run off. Can we get it? 60%. Will I live? Okay, unfortunately, not wavering. I really thought that would do it there. All right, let's move up. And let's just hope I don't die. A miss. Two misses. Amazing. Right. Amazing is what I said right there. Oh, a miss right there. And a hit. Oh, you know what? They survived. They survived. Blinter and Icarus made it, ladies and gentlemen. He's traumatized, which is great. And he also has a cut artery. Minus 35% hit points. Light wounds. I can't believe they survived Zara, though. I do apologize. You only lasted a day. <laughs> but you, you made it, buddy. Also, Icarus has... I can't believe they survived. That's amazing. So he's missing a nose, which is minus 10 max, max fatigue. It's a permanent debuff. And also a permanent traumatized trait, which is not great at all. Okay. So minus 40% resolve and minus 30% initiative. Oh no, that's really bad. <laughs> what can we do with you to make you useful as a soldier? Well, still having... Your resolve is really bad. Like, minus 40%. Hmm. We're going to have to find some way to make you useful, buddy. As you can see right here, we just got some tea for a little bit of money. You know what? It's kind of worth it because I didn't realize there was a revive mechanic. Unfortunately, we did get a traumatized trait, which is... It doesn't completely make Blunter useless, but it makes com it makes him useless as a tank, anyway. Or as anything. It just means that in battles, we are going to have a little bit of a harder time if we have a poor start. Because it means he's probably going to try and run off immediately. So we got our money. And the villagers are no longer terrified, which is quite nice. Okay, so we have ourselves a good amount of funds. We probably want to hire someone. However, we have a lumberjack right here. Which I feel like he might have some physical traits that would be beneficial to us. 416, though, it will replace Zar. Is that really worth it? The entire, the entire, entire contract didn't even pay for that person. However, Icarus did level up. He's missing a nose as well. Look at that thing. Oh. It's grotesque. We're going to give you high resolve. I think everyone's resolve should be at least plus 40. That extra initiative is huge as well. I think we'll probably give you higher initiative as well. I think hit points and initiative. We'll give you your perk in a minute. Dan, definitely more health. Definitely more melee skill because there's a plus 3 right there. It's quite difficult to come by. Hmm. However, high resolve. It's only 33. That's really bad. It's a really, really low resolve. Max fatigue. We could go for the higher initiative. The problem is we're, we're facing off against a lot of undead. And they tend to have higher initiative than humans. Just generally. 
So really, giving us sort of maybe higher fatigue. I'm going to go for the resolve. It's just always better against undead units. They tend to have more resolve checks. More resolve. More hit points. Actually, no, you having hit points doesn't matter. Just more resolve. More fatigue doesn't matter as well, because you're only doing one hit per turn. Maybe a movement. More initiative is quite nice. So we'll go for that. And then probably just the, the melee skill up. Very useful. And also Usk leveled up, which is quite fantastic. More melee skill. More resolve. More initiative. Great. So let's look at perks. We want to go for student. Something else I also want to specify with student is... I did specify it before, but I didn't realize just how great it was. In the late game, student used to be a useless talent. Like you got to the late game, and then it just sort of didn't do anything. I mean, it helped you get to the late game faster, don't get me wrong, but it still is, at that point, a useless talent. However, at the 11th character level, you gain an additional perk point, and this perk becomes inert. That just removes that downside immediately. That's so good. That is, that is so good. Of course, you can't benefit from it because there are more than 11 character levels, but it's still just amazing that it just no longer becomes a poor perk to take when you're in the late game. However, in the early game, that increased XP bonus, quite fantastic, so we are going to give it to everyone. I feel like you're too expensive, and you also have 14 per day daily wages. I don't know what everyone else is at, but I can't imagine it's as much as that. You got 11, 13, 13, 13, 7, 7, yeah. I'd rather go off to another base. Oh, we have another contract available. Let's see if this is any good. Supposed to enjoy it, so yeah. How many crowns are we talking about? So I need a caravan guarded to Ogna. I really wish it would show me, so I didn't have. To, I could zoom out and move around. That'd be great, because I have no idea where that is. I, you can always guess by how much you're going to get for it. Yeah, sure. I need to be taken to a new place. So I don't really mind accepting this contract. How are we looking on supplies? Five days, decent amount of money. We need five tools to resupply, so we're all right there. Buying some more medical supplies would be a great idea. So let's quickly do that. I think we have some over here. Too expensive. Yeah? 335 medical supplies is way too much. All right, where are we going? Oh, all the way up there. Okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. We were aiming to move around this particular area anyway. Not an amazing start, ladies and gentlemen. A very poor battle indeed. But it's fine. For we persevered. And we added more character to our characters. And Ognar is now well, su well supplied. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Feel like I should end it for today. Thank you all very much for watching me, the Ink of a Play Battle Brothers. Making our way through the lands of light right here. Definitely a very difficult introduction to the series. However, we are persevering. We are making our way through these lands. And eventually later on, we will perhaps snowball into greatness. Into high resolve. That would be even better. Until then, though, ladies and gentlemen. Until then, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all very much for watching. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. All that good stuff. Follow me on Twitter. For updates on my channel and Twitch for live streams. I've been the Innkeeper. It's been a pleasure as always. And look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye-bye.